Well, good evening. Welcome back to VP4 TV. We're here for uh, our first match uh, live stream of this year's 2024 Virtual Nine Ball World Championships. Uh, it's a match between, uh, a round one match, I think it is, between Albinario and Bankster. And it goes ahead at uh, 10 past nine my time. It's 25 past eight my time at the moment. And uh, we're here a little bit earlier because we have a match also uh, starting at the half past the hour, just in five minutes time. And that match is uh, between Jose McEwen from Spain, and I think his name is Deputy 2. Uh, he's from Germany. So we'll watch a bit of that match uh, leading up to the Albanario match now. There have been matches in the tournament so far, uh, all of which have been at a time that I can't get them. Uh, let's have a look. That's the wrong thing. Hang on. Uh, uh, that's where we want to go. Go to there. There you go, 24. And we'll bring up the tournament page. Right, we have, uh, as I said, two matches tonight. We're going to start watching this match between Jose and Defty 2. Now, Jose arrived a little while ago. Defty 2 has been in the lobby for quite a while. Uh, we then have that match at 10 past the hour, uh, Albanario and Bankster. Uh, the rest of the matches, we've got MC Clark, he arranged his match with Bobby Barris. Uh, that is uh, Thursday afternoon at 5 p.m. I won't be covering that one simply because uh, that should be a bit of a bloodbath. I think Matt's going to be way too strong for Bobby Barris. And of course, unlike in the uh, Winter Nine Ball League, Bobby Barris isn't getting any handicap. So uh, he'll do well to win two or three racks in that match against Matt. He'll be way too good. You've also got a match with Whiskey and Balls, I think his name is, uh, on Thursday which is at 6 p.m. Uh, my time. You've got Spud Boy and Spectre Dawn on Saturday. Uh, I think that's at 8.30 my time. Again, too late. You've got Bill and LS3 uh, on Saturday as well, and that is at uh, is that after 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, again, that's way too late for me. Uh, so either Steve or Slim or whoever. I can cover that match. And Aussie Mick up against Sergresh. That is for a week on Sunday, I believe. And that's 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So obviously loads of matches. And actually, of course, we've had some results. Um, going from top to bottom, uh, there's obviously a number of buys in it. So some players are going to be playing round one matches. Some are going to be playing round two. Uh, Aussie Mick and Sergeresh will already uh, discuss that one. Uh, we can see further down we have um, uh, Stubb uh, who is uh, up against Shibo. Uh, and uh, again, I don't know whether they've been in communication to arrange their match, but uh, the winner of that match will play semi pro in round two. Uh, now, here's an interesting one. Uh, Tommy and Quagmire uh, were playing and Tommy was in the lead in that match and somehow Quagmire has turned it around big time and ended up winning at 19-11. So strange things must have happened in that match. And uh, Quagmire now plays Larry, round two. Uh, Popman uh, had a fairly comfortable win against Renegade King and he's now through to play Fast Eddie in round two. Uh, we also had a, a very comfortable win for Interchange X against a new player, High Guy 8181, I think he is, and Interchange X won that very convincingly. He now plays XXX Danny. You've got Bill and LS3 having arranged their match in round one. You've got... Uh, Linus waiting on the winner of that match. He got a bye to round two. Uh, we also have... Now, again, this was a match that uh, Slim was covering the other night. 
moon cake up against the cero when I went uh, just before I went to bed. Moon cake had a, a maybe four, three, four, five rack leader, something maybe four racks uh, against a cero, and uh, a cero has battled back and won out that match nineteen sixteen. So that must have been a good finish. Uh, and he now plays Rabbit in round two. We've got the match we're talking about coming up later on, Bankster and Albinario. And the winner of that will play uh, Wink at Me. We've got Lard uh, against Paul in round one. The winner of that will play Eloquenti. We've got this match with Balls and Whiskey. Um, and the winner of that will play Bai, eh, sorry, not Bai, <laughs> will play Pi, who has a Bai to round two. There, I said it right in the end. Uh, and Keith uh, from Northern Ireland signed up at the last minute. Uh, he now plays Coldest Pillow in round one. And the, the, the bad news for either of those two guys is that Bedhead's lying in wait for them in round two. So that's going to be a tough second round match for whoever gets through. Um, Bedhead haven't had a bye through to round two. Smoke and Sid is up against Vertical Liquid in round one. Uh, Cobra gets a bye, so the, the winner of that one again has got bad news. They're up against Cobra in round two. Uh, the Reed Man and Bobby Barris, it looks as if neither of them can be bothered showing up. In fact, Bobby Barris might not show up for the match with, with the mat, even though he's arranged the time, because uh, both of them forfeited and Bobby Barris got, uh, got through by the coin toss. Uh, further down, we have Jose and Deppy, who should be just starting right now, and we'll be in there in a minute. I can't read the chat because I'm on the white screen. I'll read it in a minute. Uh, we've got Little, who is lying in wait for the winner of that match uh, that's just started. We've got Spud Boy, uh, who is up against a tough one, Spectre Dawn. Again, Spectre Dawn still looking to win his first major title, and uh, he should be very strong. In this tournament, uh, he uh, the winner of that match will play somebody called Minder. Why me? I don't know. I've never seen that name before either. Uh, we've got Chiku against Jazzman in round one, and the winner of that match will play One Pocket Slim. So that's the state of affairs in the tournament. Uh, Well, welcome everybody. I can't read that chat. Uh, so, as I said, we're going to go in and catch a bit of this match uh, with um, Jose and Defty too. So let's go in. And uh, they're still in the first rack. Defty two at the table, although I don't see any sign of life. Oh no, he's got ball in hand. So these uh, matches are raced to 19. And of course, there's no handicap in the uh, World Championships. So Def Day 2 looking off to get a good start here. I don't know whether Jose scratched or whether he fouled. He obviously fouled one way or another, whatever he did. But let's see whether Def Day 2 can execute the advantage of ball in hand. Yeah, there is a delay. I think he's one of these players... Uh, 
I am standing. What the hell does that mean? What does I have to go out his seat every time he goes to take a shot? <laughs> Well, well, probably got a bit of uh, inside English in the cue ball there just to straighten it up, and of course, again. That's a risk you pay when you start doing things with a cue ball. You can send the object ball offline. Jose has got too much angle in this seven ball, so he should be coming across the table and back across. That's what he should be doing. Oh, you're managing to try and hold it. That's better than I thought from the angle he had. So we should be just dropping this in and then cutting that nine into the side, I'd assume. So Defty had his chance. Couldn't get it done. So Jose. It's a four ball, top left corner, and a shot in the one, I think. I think it, it just goes. He's got two thirds of a pocket up there, past that seven ball. No, he's going for it in the side. He's knocked a three ball on. Oh, he's. I think he can he can nip this in and bump and get that cue ball out of there. He needs to hit it hard though. Yeah, he hasn't got there. He needs to hit it a lot harder than that. Now he's trying to convince himself he can cut that in. Well, he's got the bank. But he's going to have to dig out another great shot here. These are what you don't want. All this time. Jose has went to the well once too often. And there is a big delay now. I don't know whether... I don't know whether that's... I mean, why would you stand to take a shot in BP4 in front of a computer? Unless he's in a laptop or something. Well, again, he's done the same thing. Probably trying to do too much of the cue ball. And uh, he's rattled a seven and he's gifted rack number two to Jose as well. Well, he's going to have to learn from that. That's twice in a row. He's just maybe trying to do too much. And Jose is going to get the gift of two racks handed to him. Well, unfortunately, I don't set the tournaments. I would have uh, had the sign ups open. Uh, it's actually. The uh, it should be the Cowboy World Championship next, and and of course, uh, later on this month we've got the real Snooker World Championships. I always like to have the Snooker World Championships at the same time, but it doesn't look as if that's going to happen this year. Things are getting.
clogged up with one another. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Cobra. has to keep praying. It's one of the, the, the bloody camera settings in the game where you piss about and then you have to hit A for the camera to go down. I can't be asked for that. Carry on. I don't see any benefit in it at all. Well, I would like to think it is. Well, for any latecomers, this isn't the main match we're here to watch. It's uh, a bit of a time filler up until 10 past 9 when we should have Albanario against Bankster. And this is this has got a touch of the Bobby Barris about it, hasn't it? Although Bobby Barris is a lot longer than this. Just to take a shot. So Defty is getting a third go at winning his first rack. The first two have gone to Jose because Defty's made mistakes at the wrong time. So let's see if he can get it done this time. And that's no good. Or is it? Well, yeah, it does, it does go. I thought that was too tight, but it does go. Well, you would think, cut it into the side, let the cue ball roll to the bottom rail and back up high enough. Well, he's got to get this one done. Perfect little angle in this eight ball. He can just help the cue ball across a wee bit of spin if he needs to. And he should be off the mark. It looks as if he's drawing this in. Yeah, just it looks like that from this angle. Then again, it wasn't. So it's going to be first one in the board, and he could, in theory, be three 0 up at the moment. In fact, any other day of the week, he would have been three 0 up. into rack number four. And looks dry. Miss two ball. Let's have a look at this. Well the one ball is bad enough as it is where it's in. Oh, it could be, I was going to say it could be a 1-9 combo here, but probably not. The one ball just finished a wee bit short. But the one does go, the problem is that if you're just wanting the one ball to go, you're going to leave the cue ball here, and it's going to be very unlikely you can play a safe pot in that two ball. From the cue ball at that end of the table. Well, he did try to go for the combo. I suppose at the end of the day, where the two ball was sitting was not good in the first place, so he might as well have had a go at it. And Jose is getting to that far too much. That just needed a, a gentle little dink to keep that new ball there. But he's kicked the two in and he's scratched off. Would you believe it? He's kicked the two in and the cue ball's found a gap between the six and the four. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Defty two. Has ball in hand. 
Three ball handy. Four ball into the corner. Five ball may well be into the side or uh, down the rail into this bottom left hand corner past the seven. But the problem with the, the where the seven is, you've got to get that cue ball up top to be able to play that eight ball into the side. You certainly don't want to be leaving an eight nine combo. So he's got to be thinking ahead here. It's not just about potting every ball you see, it's about potting that vital ball to get good on this eight ball. And if you're not fully thinking about that prior to you getting there, you can end up looking an empty by not getting good on it at all. And you really should be. So we'll find out if uh, Defty's got his thinking cap on. Well, the one thing's for certain, he's got a perfect angle to draw this seven ball into the pocket and draw off it. Here, pig, the title is lies. What was he talking about? Oh, you're talking about the match at Sword Eye. I know what you're talking about now. It's getting late in the evening for me to to to, to process information, but I see what you're getting at. Yeah, Ho Jose is distracted by the fact that uh, his cue's taking a little while to appear. Uh, he, he he wants to he wants to stop get letting himself get distracted by trivial stuff like that. That's a good little cut. He wants to be glad at the fact that he, he wasn't 3 4 nil down. That's what Jose wants to be glad of. But he wants to take his mind off what's happening and, and play the game. So two, uh, two a piece. Welcome to Bill. Welcome to here, pig. You'll notice that I put you in by mistake, Bill, until I realise you you still weren't going to be around. So we've got. Uh, We've got Larry still in. We've got Matt in for this Saturday coming and Coldest Pillow are going to uh, compete in the final league match before the playoff week in the Winter Nine Ball League. Yeah, that's uh, that's too late for me. Hopefully, Slim can get that, or Steve can get it. It's too late for me. Uh, and another reminder as well: uh, I got Steve to change Friday night nine ball. It's now set back to its normal time of seven p.m. Uh, in this case, it's British summer time, so that means it's now going to be two p.m. Eastern Standard Time when it's normally played at. Uh, that also means that uh, somebody must have changed Monday night uh, nine ball Scottish doubles because that should have been at eight o'clock on Monday night. So somebody requested that to be changed, and then when I turned up in the lobby, the tournament didn't go ahead anyway. So I don't know what the point in that was. But let's hope we can get some more in Friday night nine ball this week now that the tournament's back to its sort of normal time throughout the VP world.
Well, from 2 0 down, and again, for latecomers, there were two gifts that were given away by Deputy Two. Well, hang on a minute, he's probably made a complete hash of this, though. This is not where he wanted to be. I was just about to say he's going to go into the lead, but now uh, it might not be so convinced that he's going to do it, but. He's just got to watch he doesn't put any unwanted spin in this uh, cue ball when he's aiming over that nine and twiddling about with the cue stick. And now he needs a good bump and that isn't particularly good. I mean it's still a you know a straightforward enough cut into the top right hand corner. I would uh, I would expect him to get this. Because he's got a fair margin of error as long as he doesn't hit it too hard. And he needs to just dig into the cue ball a wee bit. He doesn't want to be playing this loose. He wants to hold it. That's gone the rail too soon. Way too soon. So Jose's, Jose's getting let off the hook here by mistakes by Defty. Just getting out of line. Uh, and also, with the two racks that he gave away early on, he was just trying to do too much of the cue ball. And Jose is lucky there he didn't scratch. So Jose is going to get out of jail here on more than one occasion already early on in this match. So, uh... Jose will be looking to try and restore that little that window that he had early on. Seven ball is gone. Uh, the bank is on in the one ball and to the right side. And all the other balls are perfect. They've all got pockets. No problems. And now, having got the bank, he has to be out. You can't be throwing away opportunities like this in this type of tournament. You've got to get the job done. And he's just gone straight to the rail. And it, it just means you've got harder work. He's probably going to have to drop this in dead weight and leave a long four ball. I mean, it's not going past the six. So if he just drops this in dead weight and runs across to here, he's going to have the long four ball in the corner. Now, the other slight problem is, is that the line that he's got in the four, he wants to go forward. Now, whether he could miss the nine ball, I don't know. And he couldn't. And not only that, he's missed the four anyway. And that's now given Defty a chance. And it's Jose's problem that a lot of players have, myself included, is just not being able to get the thing done keep control of that cue ball and run tables that you should be running every day of the week. If you can't keep control of the cue ball, you're going to really struggle. And uh, the mistakes are going to be made. I mean, I've never seen Defty play, but, you know, he's maybe not a top nine ball player, but he seems to be playing with a wee bit of common sense and he is taking his time. Uh, he's made a couple of errors as well, but Jose will make just as many between these two players. We're going to be all square again, no doubt about that. So here we go, into rack number seven, Defty. 
going to be breaking. And remember also that the break box is on in this tournament. So you're probably more likely to still see that three ball pattern because of it. It's more likely to happen simply because players are breaking left and right of the, the extreme edge of the box up in the corner. Uh, and that that is going to be the more likelihood that that three ball pattern will show itself at some point. So Defty had a six ball in the break. He's got a cut in the one and he can... He can get this cue ball up the table for a bump in the nine. And that's going to scratch off that too, is it? Nope. Oh, that's perfect. That's very well done. Only problem is he's a bit straight. I mean, he can put loads of top and left on this and go forward. Loads of juice. And try and get the cue ball around off the two rails over this side. And that looks pretty good also. That's absolutely perfect. That's very well done. So this could be the breakthrough. For Defty getting himself back in the lead here. And it gives you a lot more confidence if you can just start stringing these balls together and putting racks in the board. And careless stuff is what you don't want to be doing with a table like this. Careless stuff is just doing something daft. And effectively throwing a rack away. Now, again, he can just let this cue ball open out and play the seven up past that eight ball. Uh, he can maybe try checking the cue ball a bit if he's trying to play the seven to the side, but again, you don't want to be starting to do too much with the cue ball. And there's a mistake again. He's decided to stun it, and that was never the shot. That was never the shot. I mean, he was worried probably about letting the cue ball just run out. Why didn't he just gently roll it in and let the cue ball roll out? At worst, they would have had a slight cut back in that seven into that top left-hand corner. So, you know, the mistakes, he's made three big mistakes that have cost him racks each time, Defty. And once again, Jose's been let off the hook. And I, I suppose at the end of it all, as this match goes on, Defty may well be made to suffer the pain of those mistakes he's been making and giving racks away to Jose at the end of it, it might cost him the match in the long run. Well, we're about, what, 12 minutes or so away from the match we're going to move into. And that's that round match, uh, round one match between uh, Albi and... Uh, Uh, Bankster. Well, the reason Stubbs keeping his mouth shut is he, he knows all the video evidence of him coming in disrupting tournament matches with his bullshit. I'll have it all in video and then he'll get a fine. He knows the, he knows the price he's going to pay. Well, Defty 2 with ball in hand again. Jose hit the wrong ball. Didn't hit the lowest ball on. I missed it because I was looking at the chart. So again, the problem will be from the 5 to the 6. And he needs to he needs to have an angle. Oh, well, that's he's played that far too heavy. He's going to be in trouble. Again, he, I don't know what he's... Uh, what he's thinking is he had to make sure he saw the five. That was that was the, the bottom line with that shot. And then he's having to try and spin it in. So here comes Jose again. And all he needs to do is just drop around the corner and leave this 
long six ball. Now Jose's putting right Englishness as well. He wants to be trying to spin into the middle of the table. And, you know, why didn't he take his medicine where he knew he would have had a shot? Now he's got now he's got difficulty because he's out of line. He's going to try and put this into the side. He's bumping the seven. He's got no clue where this cue ball is going. And this is where inevitably you're going to fail trying to do things this way all night. Well, he's got a bed head cut. That's coming up the table nice, so Jose is going to get the two rank lead again, but once again, it's all down to the errors that Deft is making. I mean, it would have been actually no surprise if, put it this way, if Jose was played anybody else with a slightly higher quality game. Jose would be sitting 7 0 down right now. I'll tell you that right now. He'd be 7 0 down. So he would. As it is, he's 5 3 up. And a couple of balls in the break. And the nine balls going in. Of course, that's going to come back up. I think it was a nine ball, wasn't it? Yes, it is. So. The four and the eight have gone. He's got the cut and the one. And that's gone to the rail way too soon. So here we go again. Deja vu. Defty coming to the table. No problem with the one. No problem with the two. Almost a scratch with the cue ball. Now again, just... Pot the two, let the cue ball roll out. But not roll out too far. You don't want it to be straight on this three ball. You want it to have an angle. Now he's got an angle where he could come around behind the seven. Uh, he could go forward and bring it right down the table so he can see the five. So he's got choices as to what he does here. Well, he's, again, he took a risk. He could have easily just bumped straight into the seven there and the best he would have had was a bank there. So he's got away with that one. Now once again, is he going to try and do too much of the cue ball when all he needs to do is just go, go forward a little bit and come back off the rail and leave a fairly straight six ball so he can come back unless he's trying to get up above the six. Has he gone far enough? Well, he has done. Now that's perfect. That is perfect. Just a roll in and let it roll out to there. Cue ball wants to go that direction. So he doesn't want to go too far. He wants to be there or thereabouts of the donut. And that will do it. Now, how does this look for the side pocket? The nine, well, a little dink. A little dink and he's got the nine in the side. He doesn't need to do any crazy stuff. Defty is going to get one back. Well, this match could go a long distance. There could be an awful lot of racks in this match, the way it's going. And uh, we'll keep an update eye on what's happening in this. And the brake's dry, and straight away Jose's got a shot in the one. Drop the one into the side, drop down past the two for the two, either into the same side pocket or back up the table into that top right-hand corner. That's the plan here, because this cue ball will probably miss the two. No, he's went to take it in the, he's went to take it in the bottom pocket. He should just cut that. He should just cut it in dead weight and it would drop below the two, put it into the side. 
I mean, that, that shot got me the two, but it was a far more difficult shot. Just dropping that in dead way in the side, just letting the cue ball roll it. Maybe he thought the cue ball was rolling into the two. Maybe that's why he did it. I don't know, because I wasn't looking from his end. Again, just let this roll into the side pocket. The cue ball's going up the table. You're going to see the three ball. Now, this this can't go forward simply because there's too much traffic in the way. You'd be, you'd be lucky to get out there without bumping something. You've got to come back. Now, that needs to bounce. It needs to bounce. It needs to keep going. And he's almost there. Needed another half an ounce on it, but he's still got the cut, and he should still be able to see this five ball, as long as he doesn't bump the six and end up behind the eight ball. And, of course, the other thing to remember is there's no jump cues in this tournament. Well, he's bumped to eight, and he's not potted to four. And this is one of these ones that's difficult to judge. Again, you've got to get right up and have a look at where this four ball's sitting. It's right in the jaws of the pocket. Now this needs to bump that eight ball. Right, so just get the cue ball running and come somewhere down this right hand side and try not hook yourself behind the seven. Got to hit it though. He's going to be on top of it. Oh no. Well, it will go into the side. It's tight, but it will go. And uh, if he stops the cue ball where it is, he's going to have another tight one in the other side pocket. But he's certainly not aiming for it at the side at the moment, not the way the cue's sitting. He's just trying to get cover. He hasn't got it. I don't think he has. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I think he has. I don't think Jose can get to the pot angle of that, can he? That looks tight. He's trying to tweak it a little bit. Yeah, he's got... Oh, I thought he had it. I thought he had it there. Right, well, we're a couple of minutes away. Now, Bankster has been sitting in away mode for hours in the lobby. Yeah, but I think a lot of players are scared to try and jump with the with the playing cue. Oh, there's Steve in the room. I just noticed. Hang on a minute. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. Right. Well, we're just about to. Uh, but we'll just do it now. We'll see the end of this rack, and then we'll bail out. Uh, yeah. This could have a long, a long way to go. This match. This could. This looks like a pretty good match so far. I mean, the Defty's a big underdog, but I, 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 does anybody know who that is? No, nope. he's all I know is he's got a German flag, uh, and he should be like uh, probably seven two up or eight eight two up. That's what he should be, but he just. He's been making the usual story, too many mistakes at the wrong time in a rack. And Jose's been gifted at least five five racks in this match so far. So we'll leave it at five apiece. And uh, we will wait for this uh, other room to go up. Now just double checking, Albinario is in a room getting a bit of practice. Uh, Bankster, I think, is still... 
In fact, I'm looking down, I don't see Bankster there at all now. Oh, he's in a room. So Bankster's getting a bit of practice, so this room should be going up any minute now. No hair pig, the twirl friction, friction did not change friction between balls. And it's not a cloth friction increase. It's only a friction when the balls are rolling with English. And I'm going to work on it some more and test it differently because the way I tested it obviously wasn't going to work. Well, let's... Uh... Yeah, it's 10 past 9 now, so it's got to be up in the next 30 seconds in this room. There we go. Well, we will get ourselves in. So this is a round one match, race to 19. And, well, we've seen what Bankster can do. And at the weekend there, we saw how Bankster took down two of the big shots. Uh, in the uh, in the uh, winter nine ball league, yeah, uh, it shouldn't have affected that hair pig. It should only been the uh, when the ball was rolling and with English. This is uh, this matches. You know, this is another one of these matches where Bankster's a good player, and we got lots of players like Bankster that are good players. But they don't beat guys like Albin, and and, and there's a really, really one reason why. And and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just say mistakes. The the issue is being able to control the table. Like me myself in real life, I am not, you know, any kind of top player. I'm a good player, but I can beat anybody. And the reason why I can beat anybody is because when I play well, I can control the table. So. It doesn't matter that Bankster doesn't play as good as Albinario. If he controls the table, he can still win. The the problem that most of these guys have that are that are good but not, you know, beating a guy like Albin is that they they don't control the table. You you just cannot give the table up. So how would you give the table up? Missing balls, bad safety, um not making a ball on the break and selling out or scratching on the break. So those are the things that you have to avoid. Now, I, I usually just call them mistakes, but, you know, you have choices like like playing safe or playing a two-way shot. I, I mean, obviously, to oh, beat a guy terrible. like, yeah. And, and that's the thing is you can't do that. That's like a poor safe. So Bankster... You know, execution wise is probably good enough to beat Albin if he could figure out how to play cleaner, just not give up the table so many times. Well, you know, the the objective when you're I mean Albin Ario come up with the dry break there. The the problem ball was always going to be that two ball getting up and getting good on it. Um and that's didn't. not a good save. I no. mean it was it was a, a better idea, uh but it, he didn't get it. He's he's trying to spin back towards this three and six here. Yeah. He thinks he's got enough room to do it. Well, I w I don't think I'd do that. Um, Cause this two, but I, this two ball is going to be running out there when he tries to play that shot. He's going I'm to be not sure what, he, what doing he's that. doing. He may be banking in the corner. Yeah, he's trying to bank it in the corner. He's playing a two way shot, That'll and that's do. pretty that's pretty well done. Well, of course. Remember, there are no jump cues in the tournament, so everybody's everybody's going to be learning to kick again. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the jump cues in VP are too good. Uh, I don't like them in real life. I mean, I I think it honestly, I think it ruins pool in real life. Um, I, you know, I wish they just ban them. I've just thought of something, Steve. What, you know, why not ban jumping in nine ball? Uh, no, you actually just stop jumping, you have to kick. Why not just, you know, forget jump cues, just ban jumping altogether? Well, I mean, are you talking about VP or real life? No, I'm talking about real life. 
get rid of well, them, get, you know, change the rules of the game. That's what they should do. And I, believe me, it's been discussed. Um, I, the players don't really like them, um, but um, they, they stayed in there more because it was exciting for the fans than anything else. A lot of decisions are made for the fans, like playing nine ball, jump cues, you know, thanks that kind of to, stuff. Thanks to watch to hit this half ball either side, whatever side it is, he wants to hit that half ball. Because that way he can get distance. Well, well, that, well that, that was a little out, out of control. You know, and that's that's not, you know, I mean, there's times to take a whack at it like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't think he needed to hit that as hard. You know, as long as he got it half ball, I don't think if he hit it as hard, it would have maybe not finished as much of an opportunity for Al because he's got a load of room in this left side to go in that five ball. That will do because he's now got the angle to come up for this six. Yeah, semi-polar, or write, write to Emily and tell her that. Cobra, I'm not going to change anything now. If I work on stuff, I'm going to have some select people do testing on it. I'm not going to put it up live. That wasn't working too good. Well, I mean, you can change the rules, Larry, to deal with that, but it's just a question of how far you want to take it. There was a uh, proposal for the UPA, which is one of the floors at one point, um, and uh, they wanted to play where um, if your opponent missed, you had the chance of uh, giving the table back. So that's you know that's that's a pretty cool thing there if you do do it that way. So then, like when you're playing ten ball, call safe means something because you're saying I'm not trying to make a ball. If you don't call safe and you try to make a ball, they wanted to make it so if it was missed, you could give the table back. And that gets rid of a lot of lucky rolls. Not all of them, but but a lot of them. Well, Albinario gets a buff rack in the board. And that nine ball is just asking to be bumped in. Well, this is going to be a short game here. You know, one, one ball across the table of the two, three, three nine. nine combo, yeah. He just needs to get this sort of straight. He doesn't even try to do that. He takes no chances. He's just going to dink this. Is he going to be able to hold this for this three, eye? Yeah? No, he's taking it into the other corner. And uh, he doesn't want to hook himself. He's going to look well, at him if he suits himself. He's an I think he just did. Yeah. <laughs> he got I, don't, I don't understand why he wasn't more aggressive um, on the one and bring the cue ball across and get yeah. straighter on the two so he could play the three nine. I just don't get it. I thought maybe he thought he could just be there and roll it, but obviously he didn't think that was a good play. Well, maybe, maybe that's what he did try. Yeah, he decided he decided to make uh, Bankster work for it by potting the nine, which is probably wise. Uh, it puts the pressure on Bankster, the ball in hand, to get the job done. You know, I'll be saying, well, there you go. If you're going to win this match, instances like these, bear in mind he's already had one and failed, uh, you've got to be taking these out. But admittedly, this is a no. lot easier than the first rack he had. You know, this kind of run out, you know, really, this is the kind of run out that, you know, a mediocre player is going to gonna do most of the time. For somebody at Bankster's level, this should be, like, automatic. Oh, just a little stopper. I mean, he can roll this in and still roll out. He'll, he'll still be fine in the six. But what he doesn't want is something too straight in this eight ball. Yeah, 
he doesn't want to be too straight in this eight bolt. Let's have a look. Yeah, it would have oh. better better leave a little angle back the other way and draw it up. Now he's going to go forward, which is okay. This is a little harder right. to control. Oh, and he misses it. Wow. Well, he didn't play that very convincingly. But again, it's, wow. a, it's the same old story. You know, a good table, and you can't get that done. It doesn't do well for your chances further on I, in the match. I got to believe that... Uh, I got to believe Bankster's nervous because that, you know, not to get out on that rack was kind of sad. He's, he must be kind of nervous. <laughs> Good face for video. <laughs> <laughs> You're a peach, Larry. And, uh, Let's see. That's a dry break and not a. Uh, I would. I would well, suggest. I would suggest vodka is a good thing for uh, nerves. And uh, that was a pretty good uh, idea. Uh, just didn't quite execute it. Uh, I think. I think it was. Uh, you know, not a bad shot. I mean, you could push out, but um, you're going to have to push to kick. Welcome to. Uh... Moon cake. Well, when I went to bed, uh, who was it you were playing? A Sarah, was it? Uh, when I went to bed, you were about three or four racks in front. Who ended up winning that match? A Sarah won oh. at 19-11, I think, at the end of the day or something. I can't remember. Hmm. Well, oh, is this, is a, this is a shot right uh -huh. here. Right. Let's see what he decides to do here. Well, I don't uh, know what he's going to decide to do because if I ain't going anywhere. Uh, he may be trying to play the, the uh, billiard here, but I don't know that he's in the right spot. That's no yeah. good. Um, well, let's see what kind of safety he can dial well, up. Well, why, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he? This is not a good idea. This uh, that was never going to work. What he was trying, he was trying to put it behind the seven. There was no way I'm he would have been better he's... off just uh, hitting the hitting the five straight down the rail into the seven mm -hmm. and stopping the cue ball there and letting the five go down table. Maybe trying to use the eight for a blocker. I wish I mean, that was. I wish he hadn't hit that as quick because I was lining that up from you know bumping that five into the short rail and then. And, and kicking and still kicking that seven, and I think there's a chance of that happening. Well, I know that 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 looked like no, like it was. You're gonna have to cut the five too much. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. My Discord is uh, showing me funny things. Well, it's got the cover. Not typical to hit the six. Yeah. Certainly can't do it in the short side because you're well, going to scratch off that six unless you hit and you try and yeah. kick it in. He's going to try and kick the top of it in. Yeah, well, you just uh, you're playing safe here. You're kicking on top of it. Oh, he's trying That's to kick it, it in. Wow, uh, you can play safe pretty easy there. Although getting completely safe would be tough. By the way, you should have a look at the Discord YouTube channel. I don't think there's much happens in that, is there? Yeah, I, but you know why that is? That's because uh, people are trying to work out how bloody Discord works. That's why they go there for help. So, Bankster's looking for ways to get himself in trouble here. I thought he was hampered over the nine, but he didn't hang about. So again, the rule of thumb here is get high up at the table so you're staring down the nine ball. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to settle down some. He he had to be nervous at the start. Well, I, I still wouldn't like to be sitting there in the nine ball. I'd like to be out in the middle of the table. I mean, even that's a bit sloppy. You yeah, just want to I make, think he, you want to make your life easier. He's cinching too many balls. Yeah, and again, look what happens. You no. see, this is where he's no. just doing silly stuff. The object there was get that cue ball up the middle of the table, not up the right hand side, leaving cuts. You've got to make it nice and easy. And you know, he's, he's, he's dribbling racks here for no reason. 
Well, uh, people cinch balls a lot in VP, and I understand why. I mean, it's it's easy to make longer shots and stuff, but still, you know, I mean, especially when you cinch balls and leave yourself angle, you're definitely making it so that it's going to be uh, harder. I, you know, that that one just a little bit of English or hit it harder, you know, get something that, or you're not cutting it. Not that you should miss that shot, but still, you know, I mean. I stopped getting fined for that. <laughs> oh, God. I swear, somebody dropped him on his head when he was a baby. Bump off the five. Five still in play. And Albinario is going to be 4 0 up. Well, I don't like watching matches that are going to be a bloodbath, but this is going to be a bloodbath for the wrong reasons. Because the simple reason is, is that Banks is a far better player than this, the kind of silly thing he just did there a few minutes ago. Well, I think um, he's nervous playing Albin. I mean, he's you know, he's playing, uh, he's playing a great player, and he's just uh, he's nervous. No, I, I don't. I don't see why he should be. He's got nothing to lose. He's he's not expected to win. Well, nerves so are a funny just, thing. Just let that go. I get a lot of nerves first match. I've had nerves against guys that I could give the, the five out to and they couldn't win. And I'm nervous, like nervous for my hands shaking. I, I get terrible nerves sometimes. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, it's easy to say you shouldn't be nervous, but it's another thing when you are. Well, the, the one thing that might uh, get rid of his nerves is when he's 8 nil down. You know, does he want to be that? Does he want to be that far behind? So four nil to Albi. Uh, obviously, the one can go in off the three. I think he's looked at the line. He's got a pretty good safety here. He can go forward by the seven and put him behind the three. It's very natural. Just. You know, cut the one yeah, a little fact, and go I forward. Fact, he is going forward. I thought he was looking at the angle. No, he isn't. He's playing the bank. Playing a two-way shot. And uh, that's not bad because he can make this one, but you really don't want to because you're not going to get on the two probably. Oh, well, he was able to get on the two. That was actually a pretty good shot, except the one didn't go in. Oh, this is going to be dead weight, I think. Yeah. Look for a little angle, though. Now, he can pot the two, and he can come off the rail. And he to, I think he needs to give this a little bump to get this cue ball out. Oh, he's got it spinning forward, so. Yeah, I mean, it's going yeah. to be uh, 5 nothing in a second. I'm sure he would like to... This four ball's a wee bit awkward simply because you don't want it to be bumping into the five if you can help it. And the other problem is the six ball comes in play, so he's he's, he's making sure yeah. he's he's not interfering with the five ball, and that's probably a, a, a good idea where he is. Well that was well done. I mean that's the kind of shot that can get away from you. He hit it good. But Alvin has really good touch. I mean that's that's the strength of his game. You know, the thing about this match so far is, is it's not like Albin has dominated it. It Banksters had lots of chances. I should have pulled a prank. Yeah, I should have made Stub a admin. <laughs> that would have been a good April's foos. <laughs> Stub is now admin. <laughs> Well, how are the nerves now, uh, Bankster? They should be getting more relaxed the further Albinario gets away from him. Well, the problem is he's down when Albin's played bad. You know, Albin, Albin's yeah. going to get warmed up and it, it could get really ugly. Oh, well, he's definitely a ball to break. I don't know what went. I mean, 
What what's uglier than five nothing? Three. Ten nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Which it could be the way it's going. Now this is going. Is it going to go to the rail or go directly to the four? Is he going to bump the rail? He's going directly to it. Yeah, well, he's hung the four. Nah, I don't like how he played that. I mean, I think if he'd played it to the rail and and bumped the four, the one ball would have went over the yeah. right hand side, and it, it I should have still had a shot. Yeah, he should have turned the one ball loose, and uh, there goes Bankster uh, just giving it right I back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the hell he's seen here. I mean, that's how to demoralise yourself in a match early on, doing that. And now Bonario is going to get off the hook and it's going to be 6 0. In fact, talking of scores, let's have a quick look at uh, the match with uh, Jose and Deppy. Well, it's going as I thought it would. It's now 7 6. Uh, no, tell a lie, it's 8 7 to Defty. Uh, so they're, they're sharing racks backward and forward. That's going to go all the way, that match, for the look of it. This well, certainly Defty, isn't. Defty must be better in his rating. Either that or Jose is playing terrible. In fact, to be honest with you, if this keeps going the way it's going, I think I'll be heading back to the, the Jose Defty match. I don't want to see this blitzing out at 19 0. But uh, as as it's six nil, yeah, I th I think you know Seven for the ball. guys that are are good players that are kind of like uh, below guys like uh, Albin and Cobra and you know the guys that have been winning these things, they just need to learn how to control the table better. That's the key to winning. So seventh ball has gone. No shot in the one push out being played. Six ball is a problem. Well, that's but an he, interesting push out. Yeah, well, he's going to get put straight back in, isn't he? I mean, I, yep. uh, Banks is not going to get oh, yeah. impressive than that once, once he if realizes. Bank, if Banksher yeah, doesn't give do. that back, then uh, that's going to be the uh, ultimate m mistake. Well, the six ball can be banked, obviously, but the six ball can also be used to try and play the combo in that nine. Oh, I think you, you almost would play for the combo every time there. I mean, it's sitting really good. Right, so, uh, now, here's another thing. You know, what, what frame of mind is banks for him? Is he thinking he's confident enough to get as far as leaving that six nine combo, or is he going to do something daft if he gets to the five ball and try and break it out? Mm. I mean, he could he could actually, if he goes low enough in this four ball, he could get a bump in the nine and six and still probably have a shot in the five. I mean, if he went yeah. low enough, I but, mean, uh, he hasn't. It, it's one of those things where I think most good players wouldn't move that just because, you know. Well, there you go. You see, you, that's if, it. if you do, you can come out bad. You know, that's what he's tried. So now that he's committed yeah. to doing that, now, he, now he's got to do well, the same thing. He's, he's got fine. to get right down below this six ball. Now he's checking out the right English here. He's going to go above it because he he, he doesn't want to have to deal with a nine. But anything but two straight. Now he's got enough angle. He can pinch a bit, use the rail, and get onto that eight ball. So this should be him getting off the map. Now, he, does, he, does he want to be playing this down past the side pocket? I don't think so. I think he's got I, would, to, I, would, he's, I wouldn't want to. No, he's got to come up the table. You know, he's, he's doing it. You know what happens. He's got to get yeah. this flush. Oh, this is going to bump the jaw. And he's got I it. Did. So, he's broken the duck. He's on the board. He's off the net. And uh, he's dry. Now Bonario on the one, two ball is certainly well, not well, very accessible. Three ball isn't least, either. At least this rock is not a gimme rock. He really needs to shoot this in the right, the pocket to the right, and and go three rails and shoot the two in the corner by the three. You got to draw this with the 
write English, get into it real good. You can come three rails, shoot to two there. The only other option is playing the combo. Well, he's, safety. he's playing the cut with top left to go bump around the rails. Yeah, but that's the wrong side of it. I don't know what his idea was there. Yeah, I mean, I would have, I would have played the other shot because you know, uh, it, not that that was an easy shot or anything, but you had a chance to get on it. Uh, so he's bumping he the may, two. He, back well, to he may, it was. He, he may bank this. He may shoot this. I think he's trying to bump it back to where it is and duck behind the five. That, well, he's got left yeah, it doesn't look like he's it. shooting it. Yeah, he's, he's putting it behind the five. Right, well, yeah, that's not that's not a that's not a bad shot. I mean, uh, you know, it was tricky. He got he got the hook. So now this. Uh oh, uh, watch out! That's going to spin in. Oh goodness! Oh. Surprise! It held up there because the way it was spinning, it was going to spin that's a break. He's, the pocket. He not only has one with the nine; he's got him with the 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 titty too. Well, even if Albinario doesn't get the hit, Banks is going to be hard pushed to get out with ball in hand, especially where the two ball is and where the three is. Well, he's got the hit. Good oh, and uh, well, what do you do here, Steve? Do you have a look at the? Do you have a look at stunning this two ball and bumping the nine? You've got to. He's, got to, he's got to stun this big time and get the bump. Yeah, nine, well, yeah. Where the, where the three ball is isn't great. I, I would do it every time. And that'll do it. Little bonus there for Bankster. Now that should ease the nerves a little bit. Trailing before. And a ball he's in the just, break. He's just got to stop giving Albin opportunities. You know, the thing is, is, if you get out of line, you can always play safe. Well... There's room to get to that too. Now, how is he getting past this, the eight and he's fine? He is fine. This is just a... Yeah. Well, I think ideally he wants to bump the six. Nah, I think he'll probably run five. into the five. It's easy to run into the five and then the five will kind of... It, the cue ball should head towards the six or towards the... the between the six and the rail. Yeah, oh, he, he, the six. I didn't think he could miss the five. Wow. Bump the eight eight. How's well played? No, uh, up and down. Up and down or bump the five? Anything but on top of the five. And that'll do. It's going to have a nice yep, little was, angle. That was well done. I think in real life, most people would have bumped the five just because that kind of hard stroke with inside English is uh, not anybody's favorite shot. Uh, he's going inside. Now this is where it's yeah, going out of line. Is, yeah, this is what you don't want. Uh, suddenly it's yeah. getting very ugly. That's two that balls. Was just, that was just bad speed, that's all. Is that good leg? That's good. very well done. All right, so he's he's now is looking 6-3. So all of a sudden, Bankster has woken up. The nerves are gone, and he's... Uh, I, 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 hope, what, I hope he doesn't miss what, this. What, what's the side pocket here with this cue ball? Okay, good. It's saying I didn't want to curse him. <laughs> so at last he's come to the ball game. Yeah, like Alvin isn't good enough, you give him a six-game spot. That's uh, that's really not the way to play the match. That's not, not the greatest strategy. Three ball in, shot in the one, two ball handy, four ball, well... If he gets yeah. the right angle to two, he can just drop straight across from that four ball down the rail. So yeah, that this five ball's good. a bit of a worry. Oh boy, he hit that harder than I thought he would. Uh, now, he can stun right yeah. behind this five ball. That's what I think he'll do. I mean, that's an easy shot. Right behind it. Just get it right along the short rail. You don't want to get into it too much, though, because then you're bumping the five. But that, that'll do. That's good enough. Now, I'm just dinking this and bumping the seven. Are they dropping into the side this four? He's got to take it up table, surely. No, he'll see in the corner. Yeah, that's fine. What a dink, but he hit it good. I like seeing that kind of shot, the way he hit that real positive stroke. I mean, I know it's easier in real life with the mouse, but 
still, I think even with the mouse, you know, making a positive stroke can make it easier. Yeah, I think he's he's settled down now that he's got these two or three racks on the board. Uh, you can definitely see the difference here. He's, he's, he's realised that he's here and he's got a match to play now. Now, you don't want to start doing acrobatics, so uh, Bankster, you just want to keep it plain and simple. Start running yeah. that cue ball and doing things like that, you could easily find a pocket. And uh, Bankster looks like he's in a little bit of a rhythm here. Well, that's what. He, he, he pinched that rack and then he broke and ran, didn't he? So uh, that's another one. This time he's dry, I think. And the worst thing about yeah. being dry is he's leaving this on. That's what I call a sellout break there. That's uh. Uh, good player, you do this, you're going to lose the game. Well, that seven ball does go, so there's there's no problem with the seven, it goes. You know, with no problems, you got a good shot on the one. I mean, this is a rack that I expect Alvin to run out. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, no, that oh, was a commentator's oh, curse, if ever you've seen it. Oh, oh, oh man. The words hadn't finished and coming out his lips, and it was, it was rattling. He didn't, he didn't even make the first ball. <laughs> Oh well, my God! Again, I didn't the, expect that. I mean, but the importance of that is what Bankster does now, because you know there's a glaring mistake by Albie, and Bankster's got a table that, if provided he can get half decent on this two ball, he's off and running here to be pinched another one back. Oh boy! And I don't, I don't think good. that's half decent. That's terrible. That's a, that was just that was just terrible speed. And he, he kind of went forward too much, too. Maybe he needed a little English, but oh. now all of a sudden, you know, well, if that, all of a yeah, sudden he's, he's, he's got to hit a shot. Is he, is he playing this? He looks like he's trying to cut it. It's possible to cut this. I don't, he's, he's not. He's playing safe. It's possible to hit this with low right and, you know, delicate it off the side rail and have a good shot on the three. He's trying to play safe, and he's not getting there. Um, and he left a shot in the side, although who knows where the cue ball's going. So this is this is where you gotta decide, you know, do I have a safety that's worth shooting or am I gonna hit this in the side and, and I think he could just roll this in dead weight. He's still gonna be cut in three. Oh, and now he's at it again. Yeah, I don't know if he hit that thick because he's trying to miss the eight or what. But um Okay, Bankster, chance two. Steve, can you give tips on the nine ball break? Was that a serious question? Well, he's overcut that. Good evening, and, the and the cue ball's gone. Yeah, hit the ball as hard as you can, or alternatively, don't put, don't, uh, use, use one of the lesser break cues. Hit your brakes a bit softer. That's my well, tip. Hold us, P. I gave some tips to Larry. I don't know if it's worked out for him or not, but uh, watch Larry play. Well, I'll, I'll be able to spot if Larry's changed anything in his break. Like I say, it's been like that for 20 odd years. Well, maybe he didn't go with the break I showed him. <laughs> Well, this six ball, you got to get on it. He's going to come down right. bad enough. Tam's here. How are you doing, Tam? Yeah. I'm just saying that, Cold of Speed, because, you know, there's. It's hard to, like, describe it accurately. It's easier to watch somebody do it. Well, here we go. We know the seven ball goes. And, well. Well, that's going to work out well for him, uh, isn't it? I, I mean, that was a plan, but no. it, it's what he's got. I don't believe he played that. I mean, maybe he played for a bump, but he didn't need to play for a bump. The seven ball did go. He's going to wham this. I like it. Well, again, it's one of these nasty sort of cuts, blind pocket cut, and he's gone the rail way too soon. Again, Albie's eyes have gone. They have gone. I mean, he's missed. 
He's missed four or five pots in the space of a couple of racks here. You know, have you ever noticed how when people like have some shot that they really juice up with a lot of English and hit it real hard, they usually miss it? Well, whatever Albie's doing it ain't working. And this is uh, another gift this time. That was a question, Hugh. What was the question? I'm half asleep here, by the way. You ever notice, like, people have a cut like Alvin has and they hit it hard or they juice it up, especially if they juice it up with English and then they miss the ball? No, I just I just noticed the fact that they missed the ball. <laughs> I, don't, I don't worry about no. it. <laughs> well, well, from what I've seen, I see a lot of, a lot of players shy away from those in VP, and, and then when they do shoot them, they, they tend to miss them. And I think, I think what you got to do is um, you got to practice hitting the ball hard, like go in and set up shots that are more extreme and that you're hitting with a lot of English and practice it because um, what, the, what the balls do is definitely different when you, you, you really juice it up and put a lot of speed on it, but you can learn it if you practice it. Well, Bankster got that rack there, but it came up dry. And, of course, Albinario's had a shot, and uh, he's going to redress the situation here, I think. Now, is he, is he just going through? I think he is. So he's going to have to go up, down. Oh, dear. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Well, that's the only ball he could lock himself behind or hook himself, and he's done it. And he's going to try the hair pig shot that hair pig suggested earlier on, jumping over the edge for the play cue. Well, this is about as easy a jump as you're going to get with a play cue. No chance of hitting it off the table, I don't think. So, you know, you just got to get over the eight. Really a pretty easy shot. Now, where the cue ball's going is another story. Yeah, this could end up down below the seven, or scratching like that. Yeah, well, so, that's the problem. It's hard to control the cue well, ball. Well, that's that. a big unpost error there by Albi, considering where you know the eight ball is and all the room he had to get on that ball. So it's a another gift. Uh, so yeah, I think well, the, the match is evening out here with the gifts that uh, Bankster was given early on, and it's now going to be six apiece. Albie is uh, let Bankster in, in the match and giving him hope. So, you know, that's what you don't want to do. Uh, the question is going forward, can, can Bankster not limit Albin's opportunities? Because you you got to figure Albin's not going to keep doing this. I mean, it's Albin. You know, he's not going to keep screwing up like this. So, Bankster needs to play a real clean pool, um, not sell out. Well, from 6-0 down, suddenly it's 6-all and it's a completely different ball game. Albin's given a master class in making your opponent comfortable. Well, again, well, I thought he was dry, but he's got a ball and that 6 ball and he's he's got got out of the way. So, I think this is just spin it. little right spin and just spin just it to, and get just straight to kill on it. it. Just try and kill yeah. it a bit. This is a shot that, you know, this is a, this is a real effective shot and pull a lot of right English and just spin it and it'll you you can get straight in on this two ball and he's not going to do that and you know uh, that see, was that was a not really uh, sure of what he was doing short well, there, was I, you know if you watch Efren play I guarantee you sitting out with a lot of right English and you know he's that's how I learned that shot was watching him. Again, you of can, course, you can, the table's wide open. Now we should be taking this. At low speed, you can hit that that one ball real thick, uh, and 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 uh, between the spin, killing it, and how thick you can hit it, uh, that cue ball will just sit. Well, this is painful for Bankster to watch. Well, I mean, that's the kind of thing is you just. You can't do that. He's not going to beat Albin like that. Uh, Albin's done that quite a bit himself, but you know he's going to stop doing it. Right, so we'll give Albie this. Let's have a look at the scores. 
Uh, we've got Defty up by 10 racks to 9 against Jose, so it's still going all the way that match. Yeah, I don't know, you know, Bankster probably plays good enough to get Alvin's attention. I remember after the third time I lost to this one pro, I said to there, him... Uh, there it is, Steve. There it is. Yeah, there First it is. one of the night. So uh, I said to this guy, you know, uh, after I lost to him the third time, I said to him, uh, I said to him, you're not afraid of me, are you? <laughs> he looks at me and he says to me, he goes, you know, he goes... You play good enough to, uh, you know, I got, I know I got to play and I really got to bear down, but he goes, no, I'm not afraid. <laughs> so that's kind of the moral of the story. If you can't put a little fear in somebody, uh, it's going to be tough. Right. Now that, there is a gap though. So now the three goes into the corner and the side. Oh, this is perfect. Well, this is perfect the other way. I thought he'd, he'd go forward, but he's a, a little rotated over, but this is just stunted over. Yeah, he's good there. It's going to be 8-6. Uh, I, I, I know that could be a commentator curse, but and that's good enough. It's going to go between the 8 and the side pocket here off the side rail. Well, he's got a, he's got a nut this back. See, that's another thing I will know. That dead set, that combo. No, not quite. Uh, this isn't wonderful, but it's okay. That's another thing Alvin does well. He'll just roll this and bump the nine. Is He he knows where the cue ball is going on a natural line. Like, oh, why is he not just bumping the nine? Hmm, interesting. So, the one of the real keys to... Uh, learning how to move the cue ball is knowing where it goes if you don't do anything with it. Like, if you just roll it, where is it going to go? If you know that, and and uh, from my experience in real life, a lot of players that play pretty good really aren't that sure where it's going. Uh, you know, I mean, when you get to a certain level, guys do. But um, if you know where it's going when you do nothing to it, then that makes it much easier to adjust off of where it's going, like change where it's going. If you don't know what's going in the first place, then it's, you know, that makes it really hard. And, and Albin knows where it's going. And that's one of the reasons why he moves the cue ball well is uh, he knows the path it wants to take naturally. Well, he's going to have to move it good here because he's, he's, well, he's not in a good spot. Is he going to come I would, behind this nine, or is he just going to No, no he's, going to, he's going to go straight down the table. I think the angle he's got, this is easier. A little bit of high left and come straight down. And this is just one, you really just hit this. I mean, it's not, it's really right, yeah. make the ball, because the speed isn't going to be tough on that. Yeah, but... Well, it looks as if uh, Banks is going to have to start all over again. Going to be three behind, but I think you know the, the, you have to also uh, look at it the way the match has gone from six 0 to six apiece. You know you have to then think, well, Albanari is going to have to shake himself down and wake up and get control of the match, and uh, this might be it. Might be signs of this going to happen, but Albanari is just now going to pull away. Yeah, hair pig. I put the fear in some of them, but it's uh, it's tough because I I don't play enough pool, and they play better than me, and everything's going against it. So you know, but I you know I beat a lot of pros. It's just certain guys, you know, certain guys. It just seems like it never goes well. I played Josh Roberts twice. Haven't missed a ball against them and lost both matches. Uh, it's just, it's just tough. Well, there's uh, there's Matt Selby today. Uh, but who was he playing? Gary Wilson. Uh, they're playing the best of nineteen frames, and uh, Matt Selby get beat ten eight. And of course, the after match interview. You know, five minutes after he's finished the match, that's Matt Selby talking about giving up the game <laughs> because 
he, 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 he's not enjoying. I mean, he, he sounded like semi-pro. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's tough to be a it's tough to be a pro where you're making your living at it. You know, he, he's won he's won four world championships. The world championship is just around the corner. He's got a very good chance of winning it. Bear in mind, he was in the final. Was it the final last year or the year before? Uh, he could have won another one. He's just had a bad result today. A tough game. And he's lost out, and he's talking about quitting. Um, yeah, pocket billiards is like the pocket billiards sports are like that. You so know, the, ball, ball. the world's against one. him because he's had a bad, a bad loss. He's still one of the hardest players to beat. He, 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 you know, he's taking, he's not get things in perspective. And in cold light of day, he'll probably come to his senses to realize what he said this afternoon. So, well, nine six to Albanario. Bankster at the table, and again, all these balls are there. And the only thing he doesn't want to do is hook himself somehow behind the seven. Yeah, well, if those guys, you know, guys like Chef and Davis, you know, I mean, they're good players, but everybody plays bad sometimes. It's either, you know, if they play bad, they're vulnerable, or if you play really good. I mean, uh, I've played a lot of matches against pros where I didn't miss, and I probably won. Mm. When I never missed a ball, I probably won two-thirds of them. I, I would have won more if my break was better. No. Is he just going to dink this and brush the nine, or are you dabbing to come away from it? Yeah, he's coming away from it. Never good to be dinking and dabbing against the nine because you end up on top of it. So that's one back. Right, quick update. We'll see the break. Yeah, well, I've, I've had a lot of matches where I didn't miss a ball. I mean, if I get it going, I played a tournament where uh, I played five, match, five matches without missing a ball in the... Uh, Finals of the losers bracket. I played Stevie Moore and uh, beat him. Uh, I, I shut him out. And in the finals, I played Josh Roberts and didn't miss a ball and lost. <laughs> so I play five matches that I don't miss a ball. I can't win the tournament because I got to play Josh Roberts. And he's, I don't know, he just, I just haven't figured out how to win against him. I mean, I think if I keep not missing balls, eventually I will. Now, got to go down below this eight ball. Use that well, five Steve, ball into the side if he needs to. For a big Stevie pocket. lives in, in South Carolina. He's not playing a lot of pool. I, I haven't seen him now for, I don't know, it's probably been four years since I've seen him. Um, but uh, I didn't ask him what he was doing. I mean, I, I saw him at the tournament. I played him and drilled him and then that was it. I I didn't really talk to him about his uh, what's going on in his life. I mean, I don't really know him that well. I, I I'd met him a couple times before. That was actually the first time I ever played him. But uh, I'll tell you what, that guy knows a lot. He's he's a good player. You know, he he when he was young, he you know he was. Uh, I remember him and. Uh, George, uh, what the hell is his name? George, George Sansushi, the guy from New York. They came into uh, hard times and just were robbing. They were playing doubles with Keith and whoever Keith could get to play with them. And they just, uh, uh, they won almost every set they played. So the lead goes back to three. I'll be in double figures. And, well, uh, this is an interesting shot here. This is a shot a lot of people don't hit good. I expect Alvin to. This is a shot a lot of people miss this ball. It's forward and around the corner. Yeah, and hits it beautifully. Now, that's the kind of shot. I, I say that because I see people miss it all the time. It's real easy to, like, turn the cue ball and, like, you know, overcut that ball or, you know, or, or 
gamut, especially in real life. You know, oh, you hold on, well Not sexy. you hold on to it a little more, and it it it, it squirts more, and you hit it thick, or you know. But uh, he stops the cue ball there. He can duck behind a seven for the six down into the bottom left. No, he's going the other way. Like that shot in the side pocket's a good shot to practice. I mean, just getting comfortable with hitting that because it comes up a lot. Yeah, and that's you know he just he rolls the ball on good lines, and that's that's really the key to playing good position is roll the ball on good lines because it just makes it easy. I mean, you're rolling down the line of the next shot. It's the speed's not so critical. Gaps four now. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did do the center to the edge thing. Uh, kind of a modified version. No matter of fact, I think it was Chef's. Uh, was it Chef's father? Or Chef's brother. One of the chefs, I think, was you know into this thing, and Stevie Moore was doing some stuff with him. I don't. I don't remember exactly what it was. He did talk to me a little bit about that and stuff. And uh, you know, look at whole balls. I look at. The whole cue ball, and I look at the whole object ball, and then I hit it. And, well, he was, uh, he was taking the rest there, but the one ball's come into play. I'll tell you who aims balls the way I do is Earl. Because I've heard Earl talk about it, you know, understanding where the center of the cue ball, uh, center of the ball is. So to understand where the center of the ball is, you got to look at like the whole ball, not like centers and edges and stuff. You, you're looking at the whole ball to find center and. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can look at balls, but I was never big into aiming systems. Although if, if you were going to do one, that's probably the best one. Oh, Stan Shuffett. That's who it was. You're right. Um, but, you know, CJ Wiley, he's got his own little thing about how he approaches it and stuff. And, you know, those things are, you know, they can be good for a kind of a metric to kind of get you lined up close or something, but most players don't do that. They may use little keys, you know. I mean, I know sometimes Shane does a little thing with his tip and where he looks, but that's not really what they're doing all the time. They may just use it for a little reference sometimes. Well, Albie's finally got his head screwed on. The lead's going back to five. Now, somebody, you're going to have to remind me who you are, Joseph Travis. I know, I know you've told us before, but I can't remember that. Good evening, uh, and also I'm half asleep. Well, the, the Earth isn't really round here, big, but it's not flat. <laughs> it's sort of round. Oh, it's flat at the poles. Flatter at the poles. It's not a perfect uh, sphere. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis, that's right. Up. Why didn't I work that out myself? Uh, I don't think this ball will go. I yeah, that's the right. Have that, to play some kind of safety. That's the right description here, Pig. Put him on the nine ball. This is the. I think he just done this back on a nine. Yep, just like that. That was the shot. He left an edge. He's going to be sorry. Uh, he's he's going to be hooked by the three. He just bumped this one into the four and bring it across to the three. Yeah, it's, it's a little tight getting it by the nine, though. Let's see what he does. Uh, he just decides to use the nine. That's probably a smarter play because the shot I was talking about was pretty touchy. 16 quid for a Yorkshire putting wrap. Man, that's expensive. Jesus Christ, imagine, what what the hell is a Yorkshire pudding wrap? 16 you don't know what pounds. Yorkshire pudding is and you're from the oh, UK? I, I, I know what a Yorkshire pudding is. It's you a, don't know what a wrap is? Yeah, well, I'm thinking, why well, is it called a wrap? Figure it out. Is it a, a Yorkshire wrap? pudding and a wrap? Come on. Well, <laughs> I mean, How hard is it, you? <laughs> is that them trying to make a Yorkshire pudding even more exciting than it is? Yeah. Bear in mind, it's a boring bit of pastry. I, I mean, like Yorkshire pudding. Uh, a Yorkshire pudding, the, 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 the blandest bit of pastry you could get. Hey, 
But it can have some meat in it, too. It could be a Yorkshire pudding wrap with some meat. There could be a piece of beef in there, too. Uh, from a Norwegian cafe. Well, oh, double have, kisser. Yeah, but I thought that's why it'd be expensive. Oh, that was a double kisser there. Right, quick update. Let's have a look, see what's going on. But I will say here, Pig, I mean, CJ... CJ knows a lot. He's got some pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm not saying I, I agree with everything he says, but uh, he's got some pretty good stuff about how to set up to the ball. Um, you know, I think I think what he's saying is pretty good about how to set up to the ball. How he aims and shoots at balls, I'm not so excited about, but I like how he talks about setting up. So uh, Albi has uh, regained a, a three-rack lead there in that other match. And Bankster is going to have to work some sort of minor miracle here. It's going to have to be the combo, but I don't think he's got there. Oh, if I'm ever out his way, I'd take a lesson from him. Nope, that's no good. I don't want to talk about pull. I just want to ask him about certain things. Um, I'll tell you the guy on YouTube who's probably, in my opinion, the best that I have seen is uh, the Terminator, Niels Feigen. Um, his, if you look at his videos, there's very few things I've ever seen in his videos that I disagree with. He's, uh, he's, a, little bit, he's a little bit too traditional about how he goes about things for my taste, but, but you know, especially for somebody that, that hasn't played a lot of pool or something. I mean, his stuff is just phenomenal. No, I haven't seen him. Unless he's uh, been reincarnated into another name. I haven't seen him. So I'll be uh, is heading to the finish line. Albeit he's still got a wee bit to go, but... I don't see any of these unforced errors from Albin out. So the lead is yeah, now back to six. I've been lucky enough that I've seen, you know, some really good stuff from some really great players. Like uh, when Pagalion was young, I saw Efren showing uh, Pagalion how to aim. So that was like a priceless. Uh, a priceless 10-minute watch. <laughs> was Pagaline standing on a box to get to the table at that time, Steve, or was he still the same height? No, no. He was already, <laughs> he was already a champion. He was already a, he was already a great player. Uh, I mean, but Efren was showing him some stuff, and, you know, Pagaline, of course, is listening. Well, it's now turning into a, a bit of a procession here for Albie. Oh, hang on a minute. He's running a cue ball, but he's going to be good. I think he is. Now, just remember, uh, guys, uh, those of you watching, keep an eye on that uh, schedule because there's a few matches on it. Uh, obviously, the the interesting one is Bill uh, LS3, which I think uh, is at 9 p.m. my time, so that's too late. We need to be around to cover it. Five balls going in. I think Slim said he'll be home in time, probably. Three balls thinking about going in. And uh, Albie's now got another table that he should be out on as long as he can see the three ball. Yeah, this is... Uh, what's the other match doing? Uh, so last time it was 13-10 to Jose. It's now 14-10. So he's got a four-rack cushion at the moment. 
but I wouldn't be rushing to the betting shop to put all your money on and your house on Jose uh, winning the match from that position because he's well capable of finding a way to lose the match from that position. <laughs> I'm getting all sorts of alerts coming through in this bloody phone. What's that? Well, it's 15 to 7, so Al Alvin needs four. How many is Albie's one in a row? I, don't, I think I'll be. We're going to have to look at the racks, Ryan, because I think I'll be running at least five racks here. Thanks for needs 12. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Albin was bound to play better eventually. It seems like he's run about five racks. And if he's got half a shot in this, well, but look at where the nine ball is. I think the nine ball just going to the rail is. Yeah, no, I can get. Get chipped in, or you might even try bumping the four and bumping the nine, maybe trying something silly. Yeah, nope. I like how he played that. That was the right way to play that. He'll yeah. shoot the three and then four nine. Uh, there's no reason to shoot the, the three nine combo unless you want to miss it. There we are. Albanario is just three away from round two. In fact, this match may well be over before that other one. And it started it started forty minutes before this one. Well, when you think about it, Bankster was six 0 down, got it back to six all. And uh, really, from there, oh, that's well done. I mean, that was, uh, for Albie. that was very well done. Alvin's just uh, he's he's rolling now. That was the uh, tough shot, and now that's all easy stuff. Kind of surprised you left the cue ball there, but it'll still work. Yeah, that's just sort of that draw control shot there, you know. It's a little draw, stun. Yeah, you don't want to let Alvin get in the rhythm. That's mm -hmm. that's you, always going to be bad. And you don't want to you you don't want to let Rat strip out, uh, slip away early on that you should have had. Mind you, Alvin Arias probably kicked himself having been 6 nil up and suddenly uh, he's allowed Bankster to get back in it early on. Yeah, well, I, you know, and Alvin did one of make these, a few mistakes. He's early. one of these guys that is not typically a fast starter. No. Nope. That's the way yeah. I am. I, I, I don't start fast. And, you no, know, the thing is, is you're just trying to get yourself going. But if you know you don't start fast and you don't panic, you just, you know... Stick you with know, it. Sooner or later, you knew that it would sink into Alvin Arya to get the job done. And Good safety opportunity time. here. Oh, we're not playing safe. We're blasting. No, I think Banks has decided it's, it's all or nothing. He's got a wee bit lucky there. Got covered behind yeah. that uh, blocking five ball. But he's going to be nailed to it. Uh. See, that's a that's a smart play. He could have shot the combo this or that played loose, but he's just going to keep his foot on his neck and saying, you know, you're not getting anything. And I think that's how you, that's how you want to play. You want to be that way all the time. You don't want to ever let up, get bad habits going. Well, I think uh, the little combo to start with, this two ball uh, looks fairly tight. In fact, that cue yeah. ball is stuck to the rail, I think. 
You know, as in- well, he, he may go forward and around. Let's see what he decides to do here. It's a little tough to go forward on this. He's going to probably come back. Yeah. Try and get through that gap with the eight and a seven. That looks perfect. Yep. That will do it. Hit it. Yeah, that's perfect. Just stun this out. Maybe a little draw stun. Is she going to try to go behind it? That's a little touchy going behind it from where it is. Nope, just a little stun draw. Hit it perfect. Yep, that's what you wanted. You wanted this kind of angle. It's so, let's see, does the 7 ball go by the 8? It does. Now he's not going to shoot it there. He's, he's, he's coming come down straight the, down. Yeah, he's coming down the short side with that angle he's got. Yeah, Very good ball yeah, speed. Yeah, uh, again. His, his, his touch, his speed, when he gets rolling, his speed is really good. And, you know, that's what makes pool easy is moving the cue ball well. The guy that makes it look simple is the guy that you want to fear. It's the guy that's doing all kinds of gyrations and doing crazy runouts, and, you know, that's the guy you don't fear. Well, it's a whole battle load of racks here, but I'll be on the hill. And seven ball on the side. Now, that was an interesting thing there. That just reminds me about Tam in the league on Friday, on uh, Saturday night there. Tam was, uh, he was held down by about three or four racks. Uh, and basically, Tam had to win for us to stay alive in the, in the match that night. And Tam broke from the right-hand side. He broke from here where the donut is. Broke the pack. Seven ball went. Long rail across into the side. One. That was one. He breaks next rack. Bang. Seven ball onto the long rail into the right side pocket. That was two. He breaks from the right side for the third time. Bang. Seven ball off the side rail into the side pocket. There's three racks in a row. His money ball was the seven ball in the match. And it went in three times in a row. It went hill, hill. I'll win at it. Eh, not I'll be. Sam won the final rack decider. We had to win our last three matches to stay alive in the event, and we won it 5-4. But I think He's that result by Tam right. was a, was a saviour. Hit it good. Went behind the nine. He'll go forward on this one, I think. I think that's something to keep an eye on, that seven ball. Oh, he's, he's not going forward. Why would he not go forward there? Does he want to be on that side? Hmm. No, no, I would have gone forward there. But what he did work. Yeah, well, it's game, set, and match. That's what it is. Yeah, this has been a... Uh, it was close, then it was a thrashing. Well, I suppose if you look at the bright side in your banks, so you can thank God Albanetti wasn't playing like this right from the start. At least you got six, seven racks on the board. Yep, that well, was uh, pretty much a thrashing. It uh, certainly ended up being that. 19 racks to 7. We're going to have to see what the uh, the stats say for this. But before we do that, let's have a quick look. It's now 15-12 to uh, Jose. So we'll go to the stats. We'll jump into that match, catch the end of it. Um, where are we? Albinario. I'm sure I'll be running a barrel load of racks there, almost. Now, yeah, why, is it, uh, why is it not finding them? Because I haven't deleted the letter, that's why. Albinario, thanks. To... The thing is, with good players, if they break well, you know, it's usually going to be trouble. Yeah, yeah I've run out from the break, 10. I'll be had 10 of them. And average balls in the break, 1.2. So Albany's break was, was working pretty good. Uh, yeah, 90% is really good. 90% shot percentage. Right, high run, 4. So that's the... In fact, I wonder if that's the record for the tournament already. Uh, Any ball shot? Is. Let's have a look. 
there's only been a few matches played, but I'm guessing Albinari will be will have the racks high run record, maybe. Uh, yeah, well, he's well in front as far as that goes. We run out of the break. I'm glad you understand how to uh, use the uh, statue. And I've Albinari, a lot of time into doing stats. Albinari's got four. Quagmire's got three. And Bankster had two, but all the rest, I mean, look at that. The rest of them that have played Interchange X, he'd a big Ooh. heavy win, but he's only had one back side run. Who's Quagmire? I've never seen him play, uh, but obviously... Uh, yeah, he's a good player. He, he done Tommy over. Um, right, so let's get back well, to... Good, good bracket. morning to Paul. And uh, find that match. Where is it? Why can't I see it now? Is the match finished? Why can't no, I see that match? Where was he? Was it? Why am I not seeing it? I can't see the bloody thing in the bracket. I'll just go into the room. Right, that's better. Have I seen him play? I don't remember who I've seen. Well, um, Defty's at the table. Uh, you know, that's the thing with this winter break is, you know, you can... Uh, well you done. You can put it on him. You know, that's that's the best way to keep guys on the off the table is just keep breaking and running wrecks. You know, this big pocket table, you know, and these these pockets are pretty big. I mean that it's 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 easy to make balls on a break. What needs to get there? Alba um, Trino? <laughs> Alba, uh, Alba Trino? You've been studying quantum physics, Stub? Is that uh, what's going on here? Anybody who has the offline version of VP4 will see the cock up that Steve made when he put Albinario into the game in VP4 because he spelt his name wrong. <laughs> He's not known as Albinario in VP4. I can't remember what he's called again. It's Alba. I think it's almost like what Stubb was talking about there. Al Alberino or something. It's something like that. I can't remember what he's called, but he's not Albinario. Well, Dufty's uh, run that rack. He made a ball. He's got a shot, and he's got a very good table. Um, a little potential uh, screw up points, probably the. Four to the six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a good chance it's going to be 15 14 here. Well, I said this is going all the way first, first few racks. But is he going to hook himself behind a six or behind a seven to get to the four? Well, let's see. I mean, there's a big would... gap there. I would have rather been high on this three ball because it's easier to get it rolling online. Now he's got to go forward, or he may just roll this and take the long shot. That might be the smartest thing, unless you're sure where the cue ball's going. Oh, well, no, that that's not a bad good. shot, but. It's when he came out oh. behind it. Yeah, he's good. Well, now right. you got to decide what you're doing here. Well, this is. Uh, there's a lot of options here. Do you know what just comes straight across? I can get my link to work. Uh, I would and probably hit a little short spinner. Side. I would be a little spinner past the seven. Oh, he's trying to get out past the nine. That's well played. That's a good shot. That's actually even better. Very good shot. What he did, because uh, that was easy. Well, there's almost no way you're going to screw that up unless you scratch in the side pocket. 
He's going to make a complete hash of this if he can't go here. Well, he's just going to draw this back. I mean, this is... Yeah, I mean, this guy does look better in his rating. Yeah, you know, he's he got, got, does. got him with the cue ball for starters, which most guys at 1972 aren't so wonderful with it. No, this is no, a bit too so far. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a bit too far. I don't know why he just didn't roll that and leave angle. I don't know what he was doing there. I mean, he's just trying to leave it for the, the side, but he's got to hit the eight. I like the way he played it, yeah. So, uh, it's now 15-14, and we've got excitement. Yeah, he's definitely playing, well, oh, shit. commentator's eye, uh, uh, commentator's curse. <laughs> I, didn't even get, I didn't even get the line out, and it's gone. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that wasn't good. Oh, no. Well, Jose's yeah. got to blast this for the cut. I don't think he's playing it into the side, is he? Is he playing it up table? No, nope, he's trying to nick it into the side, and he's got it. Well, that's going to hurt. Well, that really hurt. Break and run out, and he, he, he break and run out, and he dogs it on the nine ball. Oh, that's, oh. that's that really hurts. You know that he's uh, unhappy right now. That is painful. I mean, that was a there was no problem, but you know these unforced errors like that. Well, at this stage of the match, instead and of fifteen fourteen, uh, you know now it's sixteen thirteen. You know, I think it, I think brutal. he might have saw not necessarily saw the finishing line there, but I think he saw the yeah. scoreboard matched up there, and then suddenly it's it's all gone pear shaped with one shot. Well, he just went for it there. I don't know, I don't know about that shot. Uh, I don't like shooting at that. Well, I suppose the good thing, if anybody gets in here, that three ball and four ball are sitting handy for just bumping onto the eight and getting on that five. So this table's there to be run out. Yeah, you can run this table out, but it's not any gimme. Well, this is going to be the, the main shot, but who's eight coming up? Yeah. And well, either side this, of the three... If you get on this three, you should you, you got a pretty good chance of being out. That's uh, going to have to bump rot the nine. Rot roll, rot roll, rot roll, rot roll. And he's not bumped it hard enough. As Scooby Doo would say, rot roll. I was watching. Uh, I, my, my, I'm a bit like Michael Caine. Michael Caine oh, watch out. on Parkinson. He, he, he stores useless information, and I'm, I'm that type of person. I was watching a program. We've got a program over here, and it's called uh, World's Most Dangerous Roads, where they send a couple of celebrities or comics or comedians uh, on a road trip on difficult roads throughout the world. Well, we were in the USA the other night there, uh, I think they were in Colorado. And the one thing I've learned, I've learned what the name of the highest uh, the highest village or town is in the United States in North America. Well, I hope he's not going to draw this back. No, he's, he's going to... Well, he's, well, whatever you hope for, he's just done it. Well, uh, I would have just stopped it, left a little angle on the fourth, come up, shot the five. I mean, so, players try to move balls too much when they don't need to. My question was, Steve, is do you know the name of the highest uh, town in the USA in North America? Without Googling uh, it. And I'll tell you something uh, slightly interesting but boring uh, about it as well. Well, it's not in the Sierras, I can tell you that. It's got to either be in the Rockies or in the uh, Alaska. It's uh, it's actually no, it's a, it's. A, I'm talking about a town, Larry. I'm not talking about a mountain. Uh, uh, it's actually uh, a, it's a place called Leadville. If you go into it, it's a uh, four. Is it fourteen thousand feet up? It's called Leadville. Now the interesting and boring thing about that is the the coincidence is that the highest village in Scotland uh, is called Lead Hills. Whereas that place is called Leadville. Now, the, that all 
Keep yeah, it's, it's it's thirteen thousand uh, seven hundred feet uh, yeah. lower. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's true. It's a three hundred foot hill. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like sixteen hundred. But anyway, to cut a long story short, the reason they both get the names, well, I certainly know that Lead Hills get the name because it. Uh, uh, they did gold mining, uh, gold mining round about that area. Uh, that, I, I, I can guarantee you any town that's up high in the mountains in, in the U.S. is a mine. It has yeah, to be. Exactly, yeah. Well, the, the, the road they were taking on this world's most dangerous road was all uh, all tracks that, were, that came about from the gold rush. Uh, those roads would never have been there if it wasn't for the gold rush. Of course, everything round about there is all deserted now. It's all run down shanty towns that were left from when the gold rush finished. Anyway, that's the boring uh, the boring fact that stuck in my mind. That'll be there forever. Now I, I retain information like that. I don't know why, but my brain does that. Well that was a bonus. So we didn't have to get the cue ball out of there to go into the six. The cue ball sitting pretty I think he's got a slight angle, yep. Now, does he just want to take his medicine and leave himself slightly awkward in this seven ball? Yes, he is. Yeah, and it is slightly awkward. Slightly awkward because you want to get a hold of the cue ball here. You don't want to set, set it running really loose. Yeah, you just uh, hit this with a little draw and a little bit of left English and then shoot the nine on the side. He's overdone it. The old blind pocket cut, and he might have got away with it as well. Yeah, I mean, you could have gone forward like that, but I just like the more positive stroke. Well, Jose knows that if he just brushes the left side of this and comes down, he can leave a bank on, so he's going to have it. He's probably going to do that. He's looking to just brush this, but he'll probably leave a bank. Uh, it's far enough off the. Uh, it's, he's not doing it. I, I would have shot that. Oh, it was yeah, far no. enough off the rail to shoot. Well, maybe he's figuring strategy that he's got a better chance of winning with that. You know, Defty's going to shoot this bank. I don't see a safety coming there. I don't see a cue either. Where's the biggest shithole in the U.S.? Well, that's easy. El Paso. I would have thought that would have been Grand Canyon. You couldn't get a much bigger shithole than that. No, that's not so, but a mile, it's, a, it's a mile deep. <laughs> El, El Paso. Oh, Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh. El Paso is the filthiest town you'll ever be. It's just now, dirty. There's just dust that, and dirt is it, everywhere. Is it, oh, right. I thought you meant it was uh, full of whorehouses and the strip clubs and things like that. <laughs> no, no. It's just dirty. Uh, El Paso is just dirty. It's just dusty, dirty, nasty. Now, is that because of the inhabitants? How close to the, the Mexican border is it? Are we blaming well, the Mexicans? It's, uh, I mean, it's just the geography, topography, you know, it's just geology. It's just, it's just, it's just a nasty place. No, it, mean, doesn't, you know, it doesn't have lag. It's just the, the fact that he does probably hit the A button to, before he plays his shot. Oh, maybe he's doing the uh, dual aiming? Yeah, the thing where... You know, I've yeah. never ever thought of even doing that, and I think it's a waste of time, but it's in the game. I did it because it's more like real life. Aim with your body and then get down and shoot. Well, Defty's uh, he's going to have to come up with a bit of... Uh, well, what about tell the lies get ball in hand, hasn't he, as a scratch? So he's going to have, yeah. uh, he's going to have well, a chance to get back to within two. Stub comes in, types missiles number two, A and N leaves. That's twice well, he's disrupted yeah. a match. Wait till he gets fine number one. <laughs> he's not going to be happy. <laughs> Cat cam glitches. Is that the name of somebody? Is that the name of a Scottish guy? Cam glitches. Short for Cameron. Oh, that's what I was saying to the. I was saying to the guys at work. You, uh, uh, did anybody? I was asking them at work, and there was nobody old enough to remember. Uh, I said, uh, "Did any you any you guys see uh, Roots when it was on TV?" 
because they probably won't show it now because it's too politically incorrect uh, about Kunta Kinti and all of that. I said, uh, one of the older guys, he says, I, I, remember, I remember Roots when it was on TV. I said, you remember Fiddler? Uh, and he said, yes. I says, well, the guy that played Fiddler has just passed away, Louis Gossett Jr., who was 87. Fiddler was the old guy that that uh, looked after Kunta Kinte before he became Toby. Um, Ed Adsoner was in that as well, as was, uh, what's his name, that was in uh, the big country. Oh, he played, uh, he played the son. What's his name? Who knows what I'm talking about? I'm trying to think of him. Chuck Connors. That, that's that's the name I was trying to think of. Anyway, Louis Gossett Jr., 87 years old, passed away the other day. I'll tell you what, Slim. Any enchilada sauce that starts with uh, tomato puree isn't very good, and that's what old El Paso is. Well, Jose, I would even consider that good text mix. Stubbs in the chat in the stream now typing no fines, K. All right. Well, well, just keep at it. Eventually, uh, the button's going to get pushed when you least oh. expect it. Is Jose's nerves going to hold out here to get to the hill? Killer lies going to still be two racks away. I can't count at this time of night. I need a coffee. That's, uh, well, it's. At least you can see the eight bolt. Yeah, uh, he'll just roll this. Yeah, well, we'll find out what's more powerful, a missile or a fine. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm betting my money on the fine. So, Jose, two away with a three-rack lead. And dry. Well, even if Defty loses, he's made a pretty good match of this. And short. Yeah, one. this is this this is a lot of left English. Cut it and come oh. back across. I mean, you could go down table with it, but the five ball you might hit. You, you still going to hit left the six. English. It looks no, you can miss the six. six. Oh, he's he's missed it. Yeah, this is uh you gotta get shoot a kill shot here. This gotta be a lot of draw, kill it. You don't need inside here, just straight draw. He's putting inside on it too. Yeah, so I would have hit that with straight draw. Inside just made the shot tough. Well there's a lot of balls to hide behind here, Jose. Yeah, Larry, it's not, three is. it's not in the vocabulary, Larry. It just doesn't exist. Well, well that was a good idea, but now, didn't make Stub, the ball. Stubb does have a point there, Steve. He says you can't, you can't find Stubb. <laughs> you can't find Stubb because his brain's not, not right. It's not his fault, Kay. Well, that's true in a sense. But it doesn't excuse dumptiness. Are, are you are you trying to say you're mentally challenged, stuff in your defence? I think he's got some mild form of Tourette's. Well, there's a nice little bump. There was a guy that played in the NBA with Tourette's. Chris Jackson played at, I think he played at LSU. He he became Abdul Rahman, and he had the kind of Tourette's where he'd cuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so oh, maybe shooting a free throw and he'd be going. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I've been watching a few of the a few of the Tourette's videos on YouTube. I mean, we're talking about people with Tourette's uploading their own videos. Some of them are bloody hilarious. As much oh, yeah. as an, as much as an an affliction. I mean, some of them 
one of them's just oh that the one of them's a girl who has got Tourette's, but her Tourette seems to be she'll destroy something that she's just made that she doesn't want to destroy. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're they're not all the same, you know. Not, not uh, everybody Tourette's like has the cussing. No, she's got cuss, she's cussing got symptom or something. Yeah. A lot a lot of Tourette's is ticks where they just make noises and things or they start flinching around. But she spent maybe an hour doing some piece of artwork, then the next thing she's just looking at it, she slices it. <laughs> she just tears it apart. and can't help herself. Yeah, well, that's going to work. But she's got a YouTube channel showing you it all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's any old videos of uh, Abdul Rahman, but it was, uh, yeah, they'd have to, like, uh, Beep not have quite that a uh, microphone <laughs> on down at the free throw line. <laughs> he was a good player, too. He was, like, a 20-point-a-game scorer in the NBA. I mean, he was, he was a very good player. Well... This is a cut. Is it a cut into the side? It's got to be a cut up table and the six ball into the side. I mean, that is oh unlucky. Did everything right, but put the five. Yeah, you begin to wonder if it is stub. Well, this is going to be long, whatever it is. In fact, it's long into the corner. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought it was catching that job. Well, it did catch it, but not enough. Well, this is another testy one. Oh, he's overcooked that. It. It's one of them. This to get to the hill. And he's overdone it. But he's not done it enough, I should say. So here's a gift for Defty. To get back to within two again. I still ain't over this match. I still say it could go all the way. So... Seventeen fifteen. Definitely needing a ball and a shot. Or at least if he comes up dry, he doesn't really believe in an easy for Jose. And there's a pattern for the second time tonight. There's the three balls. Three and fours get in. In fact, the three, the four, the five, and the eight have gone. I think we're almost the last chance to learn here, aren't we? Well, this is a pretty easy shot. This is just natural. This is where, if you know where it's going, I mean, well, uh, you just cut this and it should open up. Maybe a teeny bit of left English to make sure it gets by the six, but, you know, this is just well, this is pretty easy. That two goes into the corner and, and, the, and side. He the he misses the ball. Ouch. Now, this is a little harder getting on this one. This is a little bit harder here. See yeah. how he decides to play this. Well, um, for once, the two balls normally very tight on the nine, and it only goes into the side. But if you get up close on that two, it will go into the top right-hand corner as well. It's very you tight. You can try to hit this on the right, right side. I think you're going to catch the tip, though. He's going to draw this back, which is probably the best answer and he's going to get a shot in the side I think yeah look at that yeah 
bit of a blind shot into the side, but he's got to make sure he comes out of there and doesn't stick in the nine and seven. Nah, he shouldn't. I mean, this is just a little soft draw. Yeah, he's avoided it, and that's perfect. It's perfect because he's got a slight angle. He can go forward, come down yeah. that other side there on the seven. He's going to be breaking for the win. But, you know, if you're playing a good player and you're down, uh oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, well, that, was, think, that was a woofer. Is he going to get away with it? Yeah, he is. I think he had a bit of uh, a bit of inside right on there to come make sure he was coming down the line oh, he towards was, the seven. He was howling at the moon there. That was... That was a big dog. Well, you've got to yeah. go to you've got to kick this and give it a smack. You never know it might go right along uh, the rail. You, you, you try to kick this in. You go to try to kick this, the six along the rail, two rails, because the cue ball comes up table. You don't want to kick this one rail. You want to go two because the cue ball will come up table. I went directly to it. Yeah. And that's usually not going to work out good there. The, the other way, you got a chance to get safe. You might even make it. I mean, if you're going directly to it, you know, I mean, you can play that for certain situations where you can get get the hook going behind another ball. But in that situation, I think it, his best bet was two rails. Well, this is going to be a nice little ball. In it's not even going to bump. It's just going to be perfect in the seven. Well, it's going to be hard to dog this, isn't it? You don't know Jose, Steve. Jose can do this any time. He's, he's, <laughs> no, he's I, a ner I, nervous, nervous I, I, player. I, I've seen him doing silly things, but he's already gone funny in the nine. Yeah, he's okay. He'll make this. Can I'm make, proclaiming can, this. Can he make him. it without scratching in the corner? Yeah, yeah, he's making this. Yeah, yeah. All right, so he's on the hill and he's breaking. Uh, I don't think there is a Marcus red button. Don't ask me tough questions. You 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 still haven't um. There's, there's a number of things you haven't done in that uh, messaging system, Steve, including that uh, the little check circles that you're meant to check it, and it leaves a dot so that you know what ones you've checked. That doesn't show up, and you still haven't fixed it. And it's bugging me. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It's like, uh, it used to work, now it yep. doesn't. And you still haven't fixed the internal browser as far as the uh, setting up the team thing on that internal browser, because you can't do it, the, the yeah. drop-down thing. Uh, I don't think there's any way for me to fix that other than changing the interface or maybe trying to upgrade stuff. Mm. Oh, look at this. That was well done. Well, that was very well done. Is very it a nice. 3 9 for the match? No, it's uh, no. no, no, it's a little dink and he's, four ball. He's going to slide this over and shoot the four on the side. That's what I'd be doing here. Right yeah. out. If it was sitting better than that, he would have had a go at that angle. He always, he always he said a go. Well, that's that's going to work because he's going to make it now. You just got to make sure you don't and follow and it and in and the and and Yeah, if he hits this full on, he could end up just dropping straight in, but he's got it well, all wrong. Well, he solved the scratch problem. Well, here we go. Just get around the table onto that five. There's a five nine to keep yourself alive there, Defty. Yeah, that's that should really be fairly straightforward. That was kind of an uncontrolled attempt at the nine. You know, it'd be better to play it easy. You could play it off the uh, side rail too with a little spinner. That will do it. Well, an unmissable five nine combo. Oh, I definitely need a coffee. Yeah. I already had one. It ain't over yet. Nope. He needs to do some good stuff here if he's going to win this match. Uh-oh. 
I don't know what happened there. Deputy's the he's the brain part. Maybe maybe it was a tactical break. <laughs> but he's given sure Jose he's given Jose ball in hand. Well, he'll do well to uh, run this rack. In fact, hey, why doesn't he just nail him? Yeah, try to three foul. This is a yeah. good opportunity to three foul. Although that's not really a very good nail him. I mean, he should have kind of. Got no, him up, should, a up closer on a ball, and, a ball and got somewhere the there. ball right in where the four or five is. Yeah, so you got to think him. about your next shot too. So if he does get ball in hand, what he wants to do is keep the one ball down here, and he's not going to well, get ball in hand. That's one way of keeping it safe. He's and going to. Uh, well, he's going to have to play the two railer here. That's that's what he's got. Stubby, you had any proposals for your match yet? Or basically, have you actually looked at them? There's this cue ball going, well, it won't matter, it's ball in hand anyway. Yeah, no, it's just got to decide, does he want to play for the three foul or? Well, I would think he has, because there's nothing happening here. There's no combo on Yeah, that's what I would be doing. I'd be, I'd be playing for the three foul. Well, this is yeah, going to be an easy not up. Get it with us, yeah. It's an easy up and down, this. Yeah. Uh, the one big target. Well, see, the thing is, is I don't, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, now that you've mentioned that, uh, pull this pill up, uh, if I can get my phone to work. You could probably try to run this out. <sighs> Two to the three is a little tricky. Shoot the three in the side. Can play safe. Oh, again, the next one. Yep, there we go. Is that the second pill? I'm busy in my phone at the moment. If you try, try, try again, and eventually it'll hit it. Hit it hard enough, let it go 12 rails, and it hits it. So, this is definitely runnable from here. If you can move the cue ball, that is. Right, cold the spiller. I'm just sending him a message on uh, Facebook. He's live on Facebook right now. Uh, check your match. Well, that's not very good. Oh, oh, He's oh. still got the shot here, though. I think, I think if he goes forward, he's going to hit the six, and then maybe... Yeah, he's out. So he's got to come across unless he's going to shoot this five-six combo. I think I'll come across, kind of run the cue ball towards the seven. Right. Well, anyway, I've sent him the message, so I think this let... is just full left English here. I think you can get get it high enough. Uh, I'm the hook ourselves instead. No, that's no hmm. good. -a. Let's see, can he cut it in the side? I think I think he's got a shot to cut it in the side. Not really the shot you want to shoot. Oh, he can put the oh. cue ball in the side, though. He can put the cue ball in the side. Give Jose a ball in hand for the match. All right, you uh, call it. Is he going to run out here? Uh, well, again, he all he has to do is get good in the six. Well, I understand that, but is he going to run out? Well, I would expect him to, yes. Well, this is just a stopper. In fact, maybe not a stopper. He wants to be straight in in that eight just so that he's rolling it in and staying there for the nine. He can, in fact, just stop it right on the seven. That's where he wants to put the cue ball, right on where the seven ball is. 
I mean, he's going top. He, he, he was going to play the stopper. Now he's going forward for some stupid reason. I don't understand why, why? it. I don't know why he just See, wouldn't slide it across and shoot it. Or, you know, the pocket he's going, mm -hmm. he could have just stunned it and slid the cue ball you know, across. It was even simpler just to stop it and roll the eight into that side pocket and cut the cut the nine down the rail. So he decides to do something daft. But he's got it done. Well, that match started at, uh, what was it, 8.30? Almost two and a half hours for this match. So Jose is through by 19 racks to 16. It didn't go all the way like I thought it would. Now, um, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, not that, I'm going to go back to the event. Uh, an update on these uh, matches. You've got Matt against Bobby Barris, as I said. That'll be a bloodbath. Uh, that's at 5pm uh, British summer time on Thursday. I won't be covering that. You've got Whiskey and Balls uh, at 6pm on Thursday. Uh, you've got Spud Boy Inspector Don on Saturday at 8.30 British summer time. That's like 3.30 Eastern. You get Bill and LS3 on Saturday night, my time at 9 p.m., but I'll be sort of heading to bed. I might see the start of it. And then finally, you've got Aussie, Mick, and Sergeres. So those are the matches that are lined up. Uh, but there'll be a lot more coming and going uh, as the days go by and as it gets nearer the deadline. I think the deadline in the first round matches, for well, those that have first round matches, obviously, is. April the 6th, so that's only what another three days away, is it? That's the third order. Well, yeah, well, it's four at the moment, but in a few hours' time here, it'll be, it'll be three days. So, And then, of course, there's others who've got second round matches uh, that are already set, but not not set the uh, the time for the matches yet. Like Larry and Quagmire's one of them, because Quagmire just finished his first round match. Second round matches are April the 16th, so there's plenty of time for that to get done. So uh, that is it, folks. So keep your eye out for those uh, matches over the coming days. Uh, I think Slim said he's going to try and cover that match with uh, LS3 and Bill. Uh, I might see a bit of it, but it's too late for me to, to be doing any streaming of it. Uh, so I'm hot, heading off for a coffee. And uh, unless you've got anything else to say, Steve. I do not. Uh, I will say... Uh, Good night, and we'll yeah. see you later, folks. And we'll see you night, guys. for some more matches. Don't forget, Friday night nine ball has been changed, uh, so it'll be an hour later for you guys in the states now, right through the summer until the clocks go back again. Uh, so bear that in mind. Right, take care, and yep. we will bid you good night. See you later, night. folks. Good night, ladies.